Hello again, this is part two of a video talking about just making a tiny mod to add glasses to the player's inventory at the very beginning of the game. Um, where we left off is kind of basically starting to make the mod. We had researched where to make it and we found out that MQ101 quest Quest being the um, part of the game that's the main part of the game that controls the whole game itself. So, so you know, as I mentioned before, this is one of the things where I wanted to um, basically teach people that are making wanted to make a mod how to get started. I mean, wh how do you even just start researching or something in the game and the first video I showed you how to even start up the game, or the, the editor here. This is called Creation Kit. Um, it's put out by Bethesda and it's used for making a change to the game. Um, and, uh, you know, we researched, uh, we were trying to figure out where, where I want it to be added into the beginning of the very game. The, the game has to do with uh, before and after war and um, I want it to be in this pre-war house that's here and so I was showing how to get into the pre-war house research where to put it um, a little bit about moving around scrolling scroll bar in and out holding down shift and rotating around to look around and stuff so you can move around and look at things and start researching stuff and uh, you know we got in and real found out that uh, through looking at uh, right-clicking on things and doing use info we were able to figure out okay this uh, MQ101 is the one that is the sequence in the very beginning of the game when you start the game. Um, another way you can kind of figure out things as far as like researching quests that I didn't talk about in the last one is you can look at the number of users, how many people use this thing. And if it's something that's very common in the game, it'll have a high number of uses. If it's just for a small little side, you know, thing in the game, it won't have a lot of uses. So all the main quest things are all very high numbers of uses, users. So you can sort by clicking on the column headers here, and then we can go up to the top to look for the greatest numbers of users. So these are the greatest numbers of users of, of things. So obviously these are a lot of the main things that are part of the game. Um, uh, these are some of the main quests, the main sequences in the game. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting that the very beginning of the game sequence, even though it is kind of detailed, is not the highest thing. It isn't, of course, the one of the main quests. The main game comes after the whole before the war sequence. Um, so there's actually, you know, a lot, you know, there's a lot more to the other quests that are part of the, ga uh, the game. Um, you know, some of these quests, I, I by playing the game, and as I, as I said, playing the game is a very, you know, a good way to get to know what where you can make changes and what you might like to change um, to make a mod. Just by playing, going, you know, it'd be nice if it had this or if it did this, and so you know, in thinking about some of these different uh, quests that I've seen during the game, yeah, they're they're very detailed. I mean, there there's a lot to them, and so I can see how there's a lot more uses of them than the War Never Changes um, quest here, which is MQ101. But this is definitely the one where we want. We looked all at it, found that this is where we wanted to make the change. So what we want is we want a quest, our own quest, that's going to start up when the game starts. And that quest is going to track and see what the status of this quest is. What we wanted to do is we're going to, so we're going to reference one quest from another. We wanted to are give them the glasses on if the quest stage is 10 or greater we want to of uh, this quest mq 101 if it's 10 stages and stages are steps step one two three four you know they're not in order i don't have to be one two three four but they have to be sequential um so 10 or greater we want to give them a set of eyeglasses so that's what we're going to try and do so um what we will do is um, so we're going to want to do something like this. So it says game get player. So we're going to say game get player, and then we're going to do some 
little small call, some little uh, 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 a little bit of script code. This is scripting code, which is there's often times little pieces of scripting code that you know run certain um, little sections of code that do something. So um, you don't have to do a lot of coding and making mods. Sometimes sometimes it's a lot. Some of the mods I've made have quite a bit of script code in them. To, to get something sophisticated to happen, but some things are pretty simple, and ours are gonna, it's not gonna be that bad. It's just, we're gonna get the player, we're gonna check if they have glasses, and then if they don't have glasses, we're gonna give them a pair of glasses, and then we're gonna equip the glasses. So that's, it's like three lines, pretty much. It's gonna be three lines of script code once we find the right spot to put it in. So, and so we need to create a new quest that starts up in the beginning and then checks this quest and, uh, if this quest has gotten to 10, um, then it's gonna, it's gonna give the glasses and then be done. And then basically it's finished. So I'm gonna cancel because I don't wanna, uh, oftentimes if you see okay or cancel, I always hit cancel uh, just to, cause I don't wanna change anything. I need to accidentally change something, so. And again, as I mentioned, a star will be up here if something changes. If you change something and you didn't expect to, um, just reload, just reload and, uh, so let's just create an initial quest and then we'll save it and then we'll go on from there. So uh, what I would say uh, here is we're just going to go uh, right click here. There's always a lot of options on right clicks here. One of the things we can do is say new and that's gonna create a new quest. So we're just gonna say new and uh, we get a new quest. So we gotta name it something just like that. All these other ones have some kind of ID here. Um, we will call ours, um, it's good to put some type of little prefix on the quest so you can find it easy. Um, uh, and it can be anything. Um, I think I will just proceed my with I. Um, uh, so everything I do, I'll just put I on the front of it. <laughs> uh, I and then glasses start. Um, that seems like that would be a good one. Um, and sometimes people put an underscore character in front of it. Sometimes they won't. Um, maybe I'll just leave it like that. I'll put a capital G I glasses start. Um, that, that. Okay, so quest name won't matter because we're not going to actually um, be showing this quest. Um, that if you want somebody to see that you've started a quest, that's important. In fact, I'd say for ours, a lot of these aren't important. These are only important if you wanted to see something during the game or have something. Uh, for most, for this small little mod for the eye glasses, it's not going to matter a lot of this stuff. And you can look at a lot of other videos to see what all these do. But we won't need any of these. The most important ones for this one are uh, small. We want it to start, this quest to start in the very beginning of the game. And we want it to only run one time. We don't need it to run more than once. Um, and, and that's pretty much the only thing we're going to need. So um, there are other tabs, but we're going to want to just get out of this first and just hit OK. Um, and then up here, you see this filter. This is an important thing sometimes. It lets you search for things. So like we can look for I and we can just see our I. But we also caught I bot. So you can see it doesn't matter if it's capital or lowercase. It doesn't matter. The capitalization doesn't matter here. It doesn't pay attention to that. Um, but if we thought eyeglass and there's iBot, because there's a robot called an iBot, so the iBot's here, um, and eyeglasses uh, is here, that's ours. So now we've created a, a, a new quest, so we can now save this mod. So we'll just say file, and we're going to say um, save, and it's going to say, it's going to, so an ESP is a plugin file, an ESL is what we'll probably want to eventually make this an ESL because this is going to be a very small little thing. An ESL is an L for light, a light plugin, something that makes a very small change um, to the game. And so uh, eventually we'll want to make an ESL, but for right now we're just going to call it ESP. We can do the ESL part later. We don't have to do it right now. So, um, so there isn't really any other options here. You just want that one. So we're just going to say name it something, and I think we'll just name it... Um, uh, this name kind of matters because this is going to be your plugin name um, that people have. So um, why don't we just call it the same thing? I think I glasses, not capital. Uh, we don't need. We can do that inside of our mod, but we'll call it I glasses 
start. Um, and that will be uh, um, an ESP file that automatically put the ESP on there for us. So iGlasses start, and that will pretty much describe pretty well what this does, iGlasses start. I could put at, but, um, uh, or we could call it starting iGlasses. Um, we could put the word at if we want to be, um, add some better English. Look at some of the other names. They don't really have, they have on, I guess. Some, some of them have certain things. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do that. Eyeglasses at start. All right, then that'll be completely correct. Okay, so that's what we're gonna call this particular uh, modification file, and we're gonna save that. Okay, so now it's saved, and you can see now it's changed eyeglasses at start. The little star will now end up on the end if there's one thing. So that's our thing. I think I will change this then to you to so to rename is just kind of like you can click and then click again uh, after a second and you can I'm going to change this now to eyeglasses um, at start and I think I need to keep these lowercase just to match exactly the same thing eyeglasses at start just like the mod name so the quest names are exactly the same as the mod name. Um, it's going to say, do I want to create a new object because I'm kind of renaming it. I say, no, we'll rename. I say, we'll say no to rename. And it said, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. <clears throat> so, okay, so now we've got this. You can see there's a star there. That means we've made a change. So um, this, is, this was a known change. Uh, so we're expecting that star. So if we click save, you'll see the star goes away. That means it's saved now. The, whatever was changed is now and has been saved to the disk. Um, after clicking the save plugin here. So now let's go into creating the small mod. So we'll open up the quest. I double clicked on it. And here you've got quest. And now we have our stages. That's not going to matter. Um, we don't need stages or any of this stuff. Um, uh, you again, you can go look at a lot of other videos on the internet about how what all these things are stages, objectives, aliases, um, scenes, how to create uh, different scenes, and stuff. all this is stuff. We, um, and I don't want to get into all that because there's plenty of excellent videos out there. If you start looking around on YouTube, you'll find so much stuff um, uh, that's about just type in uh, creation kit, uh, Fallout 4. Uh, or Creation Kit Skyrim, if you're doing Skyrim or something, you know, you just and you'll find a wealth of videos uh, on, of how to get started and just start searching for things and reading and watching videos and you'll you'll learn about stuff. Like I said, the one thing that I felt is beginning to end, um, there wasn't a video, so that's what we're going to continue on that. So this is just the work part of the the uh, creating a mod part. So we already know what we want to do. So how do we get it to do? We wanted to add the glasses. Now, to add the glasses, we need to, um, you, you can't, when you start a quest, you can have it, uh, you can have it run some script code. And the way you do that is you come over to, to here. And you can see here it's got add, it's got script name. And so you can just say here add, and that'll add a script. So when you say add here, um, you can put in, whatever you want here, and it's got all the scripts in here. Um, and, uh, okay, so, all right, so it closed on me. So, okay, probably a bug, but anyway, so I, it just went to the background. And so here we are again, let's double check, make sure that little burp that happened <laughs> didn't edit anything, which the stars not set, so that means nothing was changed, so we're okay. So now we want to create a new script here. So um, it's a little weird, but you know, you type here, there's no button to create a new script. It's right here, you just have to double click on this. You select this and you double select this new script, and it will actually create a new script. I think they probably should, inter user interface should have had an add button or something down here next to okay or something, but you click there. Um, I don't worry about it. So, so you can create a namespace for your script so that, um, you know, like, 
some people use AA or something, some other so that your script goes in a certain um, full subfolder so you can find it easier. I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, I, I like doing it uh, for other mods I've done. So you can say eyeglasses at start, and that'll be our, where our scripts all go. Um, in addition to that, just so that I can find them easy on disk, I like to use a prefix with an underscore on my script. So I put like I, and an underscore, and then whatever script name I want to be. Um, and for this one, this is the, um, I'll we'll call this maybe like main quest. Um, this is the main quest uh, for the this mod. Um, and so we're just going to call it main quest. And again, this is only going to be a few lines. So all this um, <laughs> is much more important when you have many, many, many scripts uh, for a mod. But for a small mod like this, it almost doesn't matter if you have a namespace. You could leave this blank. Um, <laughs> For this, you only have one script, although you probably still want to preface it with something so you can find it easier. Um, that's going to be important when you're trying to package it later on to upload it, because uh, we need to gather all the files to put in the... Uh, we're going to put them in an archive and then upload them. Uh, so you got to find them later on. So it's kind of helpful when you can search for them easy. And having them in a namespace and having them with a prefix on it makes it easier to find them. You can do searching and in general, it's just easier to find them. So, okay, so we're gonna, this is all we need right here. So we're just gonna say, okay, and we're gonna let it create the script. Uh, that's it. So it pops up with this first window that's gonna be what properties, properties you wanna add. And properties are uh, links to other things. Now we're gonna want that for sure. Although I may do it a different way than this because I am just much, I don't necessarily like adding properties here. I'll show you how to add one just because I, I know we're going to need one. So let's add a property. And what do we want? Well, we're going to, what type is it? So there's all the different types of things. So one of the things is we're going to need a quest. And we're going to need a quest to point to that other quest. Now, what was that quest called? It was called MQ101. I'm just going to call it the same thing. And uh, initial value we don't need. Um, and it's not an array. It's just we're going to point to that other quest. Now, when I hit OK, it's going to add it, and you'll see that because we named the property the same thing as the exactly the same as the quest, it went searching for a quest that had the name MQ101, and it found it automatically. Um, if you don't, if you name it some something else, um, like for example, um, if we were to name it, uh, let's just add. Uh, let's see. So you, you would if if you were if you didn't name it exactly the same, it might not be able to find it, and you would have to pick which quest you wanted by looking in this list and pick which one it is because it couldn't match up the name. But it's convenient to name it exactly the same uh, because if you can, if there's not some name conflict, uh, you name something else that same name. <clears throat> uh, this is kind of an odd name, of course. MQ one hundred one. It's probably not. They're probably not going to have something else named this. But, um, but that allows you to create something um, and it automatically link it up to the object that's in the game. Because what, it, what is this? This is a list of things that point to other objects in the game. So um, uh, and that also, I mean, they're, they're, it can point to a, a variable, which a variable is a, a way to store a value, like a number or a, um, a true or false. Uh, value um, but in this case we just want to point to this quest which is already there <clears throat> so um, I'm going to now uh, say this is okay because this is basically the main thing we're going to need um, we might need one other thing um, but so you come here and you can see it says eyeglasses at start and I main quest so that's our script so now we're going to we're going to go and you know, edit some of the code and make some changes. So I'm going to double cl uh, double click on this to edit it, and you can see here's our quest property MQ101, um, and that's our quest. Uh, one thing that you can do, which is sometimes helpful, is just underneath each variable you can use curly braces, 
and this is just a standard their standard editor which is not the greatest editor uh, it's kind of small the font it's hard to see there's no way to change the size of the text um, there are ways you can look online to use a different editor instead of this editor. Um, in particular, uh, Note Tab is a good one. Um, uh, that's a good editor for um, these script files. But to get back on topic, you can you can add some comments here. You can say this is the start of the game um, quest, and that will tell you what it, what kind of thing it is. Um, so that's a nice thing to do. Uh, another thing is they have, you can group your properties. So you can say group and you can give it a name. And I like to group my properties and say something like this is a, um, I use the word asset. This is a game asset. This is something that came, is built into the game. That way I know which things are my things that I added and which things were built into the game. Um, and a lot with a lot of things that you have, whatever, whatever is something like a group, there's always an ending thing. So there's something like an end group. So that's kind of the start of the group and the end of the group. Okay, so that defines our, um, our references quest. And now what we want to do is we want to now detect if we've gotten to 10 or greater. So um, one thing you go, okay, well, I, what this is doing is this is saying when this quest runs, this script is going to run. So this, this is a thing that extends quest, which um, extends is kind of a, an object-oriented programming concept. Um, don't worry about what that is uh, unless you want to go look it up. Um, it has to do with you know, computer programming. And um, this is saying this script is something where it will run when this quest um, starts or, or other things happen to this quest. So um, we do want to actually do that and find out, okay, we want somebody to run when this quest starts, but we need to know what, um, what do we write here in this code here, uh, in this script code to, to tell it, hey, run something when it starts. Well, this is where now this website can be very helpful. Because you can now, when you start getting into the scripting part of it, this website is uh, that they have here for creationkit.com is extremely useful for researching uh, what you need to do to, to make a change. So what I like to do is I just type in something like quest and I put the word script after it. And that is the key. Something in the game, like a quest, an armor, an ammo, a weapon, and then script. You just do that and you press enter and it'll search for it and over here it'll if you typed in something reasonable you'll you, these are you know text matches which will you know you might find it over here if it's not over here but right here quest script this tells us everything that we can do within a quest and so here these are all the things we can do now um, fine and all member uh, you know global functions are you know Different functions are things that you can call on a quest, um, but that's not what we want to do. Um, games uh, and, and many programming things are written in what they call event-driven programming. They're written in a way such that, and this is just something you have to kind of know, is that they're written so that they respond to things that happen um, to objects and locations in the game. So when a quest is started, when a weapon is swung, when a weapon is shot, when a armor is hit, when a actor is hit, you know, um, by, a, you know, a, a weapon. So these kind of things are when a, you know, a spell is cast or when a potion is drank, you know, these, these kind of things are events that happen and you can now respond when those things occur. So the way that they do it in um, this creation kit is they have um, what they call on methods. And if you scroll down, you'll see events. And they all start with on. On quest init. On quest shutdown. On reset. 
So these are things that happen on. Um, all these red ones aren't really used. Uh, um, in any case, we don't need them for our what we're trying to do here. Um, the one we want is this one, on quest init. That's when event received when this quest has just started up after alias is filled. And don't worry about this, but we're not going to use any aliases, and you can read more about that. Um, but re event received when this quest has just started up. So the easiest way to do this is just click on this, and it will give you a syntax. And you just grab this and copy it. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my editor right here. And I'm going to paste it in here. Now, with every event, as I said, there's always an end event to finish it. So that's our uh, what, what's going to happen when the quest starts. So as I said before, um, we want to know uh, when this quest has gotten past uh, 10. So um, remember, that is the stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to check. We're going to say if the uh, and this thing up here, MQ101, if this quest, and there's, you know, we're going to, how do we get the stage, which stage it is? Well, that's, again, uh, we're starting from basics here. First time you've ever made a mod. How do you get the stage from this? Well, how do we know if it's stage 10? You want to check if it's 10 or greater. So how do, how do you do that? Well, again, we're going to go back to this thing here. Now we're going to go back to the quest script because we needed, that was just looking at that one. So what can you do? How do you find it? Um, well, you can just type in, for example, and search in the search the text on this page for stage. So we've got uh, now we've got all the matches for stage, and we can start scrolling down and looking. We've got uh, stage, stage, lots of stage. Is stage done? Get set stage. Um, the one we really is just fine is this one. Gets current stage ID. Gets it's an integer, which is like ten. Obtains the highest completed stage on this quest. So this is the one we want. So we're just going to, again, do some copying here. We're going to copy this. Couldn't get all of it, but I'll fix that later. So we're going to put this. And the way you call something on, on a quest is you say dot. So you have, you say, this quest, I want to do this thing off of it. And that thing is get the current stage ID. So this object, which is a quest, I want to get the current stage ID. And then you have to put parens because Sometimes some things require um, some type of uh, data to be passed in to that thing. So it, you know, it might be uh, a number, some number. It might be some um, uh, text, you know, um, some kind of text that you have to pass in. This one doesn't require anything. It just returns us. The, we we say this is the, our quest. This is what we want to get the current stage ID. It's going to return it from us. So now we're going to say we want to, there's a little bit of comparison, we want to say if it's greater than or equal to 10. If it's greater than or equal to 10, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, give uh, player eyeglasses. Okay, so um, then we're going to, as, as everything, if there's an if, there's also an end if. So we're going to have to have uh, this other, I said here, give player eyeglasses. Now, um, I'm only doing this because I, I want to introduce the concept of a function. A function is some kind of thing that you call that does something. So we call, we could do that by saying function, and then we use that same name, give player eyeglasses. I'm going to copy and paste that, and we'll put the same paren, open paren. It doesn't, there's nothing that we have to pass to it. And then we're going to put an end. And whenever there's a function, there's also an end function. And so now this is the part where we would give um, eyeglasses. So I'm going to do one little thing to just show you a how you pass a parameter. I'm going to change this name of this thing to give eyeglasses. And I'm going to change this to give eyeglasses. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another game asset up here. Now I'm going to do it the other way here so you can see how you can do it here. You can just type in and say, I want an actor. It's one of the, the uh, NPCs or somebody in the game, and I want that to be a property. 
and we're doing this manually instead of doing it through the the box uh, the, through the editor the and I want to call this player ref um, and I'm going to say it's auto it's an automatic variable and const it's never going to change const means never going to change auto means it's just a standard variable it's pretty much the normal type for most things and what's this going to be this is going to be player it's going to point to the player so this player ref here is going to point to the player so i'm going to copy this name and so when we say give eyeglasses we're going to pass in the player ref saying we're going to give eyeglasses to the player and so here in this function we're going to take something so what do we need to take we need to take an actor because the player is an actor just like other things so we're going to say actor and we're going to, i'm just going to call it um a is fine enough um, you can use uh oftentimes they'll use uh this kind of uh old microsoft syntax where a is for argument and uh, k is for the keyword and then you could write actor or whatever um right you know it's it's fine i use that sometimes uh, other times I just use A for some small variable. We use A here for, for actor A. <clears throat> okay, so so that's what we want to do. If it if this quest is uh, is greater than or equal to ten, then we're going to give eyeglasses to the player. And then when we're in here, we're this is going to give eyeglasses to whichever actor is passed in here, and that's going to be the player. Um, so now we need to figure out how to give something to the player so we need to do three things we need to check oh and uh, what you do here is semicolons <laughs> I type slash slash used to uh, um, things like uh, C++ and Java language uh, so um, which we have uh, comments uh, comments in the game are just little text that don't actually do anything they just allow you to put some some text in there uh, to for your own documentation so right here uh, I'm gonna put we have three things we need to do we need to check if the uh, actor has eyeglasses we need to um, give um, eye glasses if they don't have them not have them and we need to equip eyeglasses let's say we got the eyeglasses so those are the three things we need to do um, so that's things that are left to do here to finish up uh, the other thing that we need to finish up is we need to finish up one little side thing here is that it may be the case that we haven't reached uh, 10 yet. We may be less than 10. And if we are less than 10, then um, if we're less than 10, I don't think that we want to, it's still starting. I don't think that we want to give them eyeglasses. So, um, So I think that we, yeah, I think that we need to do a little bit here and, and hold off. Um, and that's going to be an extra part here. So we'll, what we need to do is what they say is if this is true, we're going to do something. Otherwise, if it's not true, then we're going to wait for um, what they stage 10. So that part we'll have to finish up too. But again, uh, these videos can run long if you're explaining a lot like I am. So I'm going to cut it off here. And in a third video, we'll finish this up and hopefully then try it out. Okay. Um, so that's it for this one. We will finish up this part and this check in the next one and see if it actually works. Um, I will do one last thing. First thing we'll do is we'll save, and you can see when you save, it makes sure that it works, and you can see here it succeeded, so that means it worked. 
One last thing is that we added this player ref and we didn't actually hook it up to the player. So what you can do is after you've saved it, you can now close it, it's successful. Now you can go into this properties and you'll see that it's set up just default none. So that's not what we want. We want it to be pointed to the player. Now we could go and pick edit. We could edit and pick which, which reference we want to point to and stuff manually. Uh, but what luckily the game knows about something called player ref. If you name it player ref, it knows about that as it turns out. And if you hit this autofill, it will actually, or you can hit this button autofill up here. Autofill here is just for one. Autofill all will try and autofill a bunch of them. If you have a bunch of them, you haven't filled in. <coughs> but it will actually go and try to uh, fill this for you. So, and automatically determine it. So, uh, it knows about player ref, so it, you'll see it'll automatic, automatically fill it with the player. So it says one property is auto-filled, and we'll say OK, and you'll see it's pointing to the player ref. The player happens to be 14. It's one of the smallest numbered objects in the game. It starts at 1 and goes all the way up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it goes up to 14. It's, um, this happens to be a, what's called a hexadecimal value, but it's, uh, you know, it's still a very small number in the game compared to how many objects there are. So, so that fills this out and will now point at the player properly. So uh, that's the last thing we'll do. Um, we can hit OK. And you'll see up here there's a star, which means we haven't saved it yet. So we'll hit Save. And now that is saved to this eyeglasses start ESP. And in the next one, we will add those couple extra things. Uh, so that's it for this one. And thanks a lot for watching. And see you in the next one.